everybody, this is Nia Feiler. I'm here with the Evolutionary Astrology message. This time between the 11th and the 20th of March 2022. Coming up to the March equinox. This is where I talk about celestial transits that affect all of us, all zodiac signs, and how to better cope with them. <laughs> but before we even start, I want to mention the passing of astrologer Ellen Oaken. Uh, during this week from COVID in Indonesia. Alan um, reached a status in the 70s as he wrote several amazing books about astrology and gave astrologers worldwide a very sensitive and wise way to deal with the symbology of the planets with the symbology of the planets. Um, nevertheless, we are at a time and at an age that we need to look at a man and his fool. And the full spectrum of that person, and if there is a shadow, not ignore it. Back in 2009, Alan was invited to be the keynote speaker here in an astrology conference in Israel. Um, I was attached to be his attaché to make sure he doesn't need anything and doesn't miss anything. And when the conference was over, Alan told me he was going to Jerusalem and he would love me to give him the tour. I was very honored, of course, that one of the biggest teachers in the world, who's more than twice my age, asked me to accompany him to Jerusalem. And I gave him the grand tour. And when it ended, I brought him to his hotel and he said, why don't you come up and take some brochures? I want you to get a scholarship for my astrology school in Bali. And I did. I went up and then he jumped on me and I froze. And an hour and a half later, he was on a plane and I never heard from him again. I confronted him about two years later and he was very, very... Uh, he talked very ugly to me. He did not admit his behavior. And two years ago, when the astrology world was talking about Kaipacha and student-teacher boundaries, ethical student-teacher boundaries, I exposed this matter that happened with Ellen Oaken and how much it hurt me and how much it debilitated my ability to trust teachers and the astrology world. And in this past week, I saw so many people praising Alan Oaken, what a kind heart and soul he was and his contribution to the world of astrology. And let me say it and say it clear. If you're going to talk about Woody Allen, I can tolerate that you'll say that he's one of the greatest script writers and directors of the 20th century. But I will need you to say in the same sentence that he is a pedophile that married one of his stepdaughters and molested the other. If you're going to mention Bill Cosby, I can tolerate you saying that he was a great comedian. But I would need you to mention that he raped dozens of women over his career. This is not a day and an age that we can neglect or overlook the shadow of a man. And if we hold the ethical banner in our realms, in our circles, in our groups and societies, let us stand for truth. May Ellen rest in peace, but he never showed remorse nor understanding. For the damage he had created. So may Ellen rest in peace and thank you Ellen for all your contribution to astrology. But hopefully the next time you'll never do the same things again to students. So let's talk about spring equinox. Let's talk about the energy in the sky. We're coming from a very combative very militant energy that we all felt in our personal lives, a deep transformative energy that we all felt in our 
personal lives, Pluto conjunct Mars and, and uh, Saturn conjunct Mercury. Um, and we could see that combative atmosphere in the world with Ukraine and Russia and the economic war and the suffering of people. Hello, Georgia. <laughs> and as we are heading from March 11 into the 20th, we are heading into a different energy. First of all, a much more illusion-filled energy as the Sun and Neptune are conjunct exactly on the 13th of March. This is the time of the year f that has holds the greatest inspiration and, and, and creativity and um, sense of uh, spiritual connectedness. Nevertheless, it is also the time that illusion and, and unrealistic romanticism is at its height. That feelings of passivity that we are indeed battling a stronger current, an oceanic current, that we are nothing but leaves on a great wind is heightened as well. And definitely there is a greater need to be calculated, to be realistic and practical, and watch our boundaries. <clears throat> um, Mercury is going to sextile Uranus, which is a good thing. It can help us update our moves, our understandings, the information, the paradigms we believe in. And the Sun is sextile Pluto. This is on the 17th and the 18th. And the Sun sextile Pluto can also allow us to go through personal transformation to understand ourselves better in that sense. Mercury on the 16th is going to square Mars and um, Mars is squaring Uranus just after that and this is a totally different energy. This is a combative energy again. This is an energy that may lead, especially when Venus is also squaring Uranus, that may lead to frictions and, and separations and individualization processes. Um, our communication and thinking becomes much more straightforward and much more independent and sometimes more conflictual. This is a time we need to watch out from all kinds of conflicts um, within the way we approach other people our moves and how they affect other people and of course the communication and talking about world leaders and what we hear on the news things are going to escalate I'm afraid this is a, a, a time that we could unleash um, our tongues and words carry a great value um, and importance and in that sense as we head in to the full moon uh, in the 27th degree of uh, uh, Virgo on the 17th of the month opposing Neptune trining uh, Pluto intense time there's a wish for a more tranquil utopic time this is the time of the year when we want to see a movie we want to read a book we want to fall asleep we want to go on vacation we want to be just in the hammock doing nothing, you know, and not deal with all that hectic energy that we need to deal with. Nevertheless, this is a, a, a full moon that wishes us to do things healthier, more pragmatically, and, and understand that we need to be more hands-on. Venus and Mars are sextiling Chiron during the next few days, and... This is a good time to heal our relationships, heal the way we, we, we um, you know, our own actions and our wants and our cravings. And it's definitely a time for an update as Mars squares Uranus. As I said, it's a very combative, it's a short fuse time. We could, you know, lose our temper and um, try, try to be more calm and calculated at this time. But nevertheless, a time for an update. Nevertheless, a time for an update. And as we head to the March equinox at the 20th, just the day after that, Mars sextiles Chiron, Mars square Uranus, and Mercury conjunct Neptune. So 
on the news we could hear lies we could hear illusions we could hear um you know people talking their own paradigm and that paradigm doesn't necessarily have has to correlate with reality with general reality and this is all about is our personal good in tune with the general good like we could take putin and say that his personal good isn't in tune with the ukraine general good right now but let's take it to our own lives and if there's some some conflicts how do we deal with them do we deal with them better than the world does <laughs> And it's really a time to <clears throat> be careful with what we believe as Mercury and Neptune are conjunct and what we decide. It's a, it is a time of illusions. Um, the spring equinox itself is a wonderful time for uh, ceremonies, for meditation, for attunement. And even though we can see the war in Ukraine progressing as a perfect storm, you know, and I've always said, and I'll say it again, the pattern has always been with what started 2020 with COVID throughout the last thousand years. It was always a plague, economic chaos, and then a war. Always the same thing. And here we are at the stage of the war. It doesn't mean that it's not our responsibility to pray for peace to do everything we can to elevate the misery of those suffering to go out to the streets and call for peace and think of Mahatma Gandhi and how he brought the British Empire to his knees to its knees without raising a hand or a fist and so definitely our responsibility is to do everything we can and to pray that this doesn't go on to be the war that it can be and hopefully we'll not see this escalating over the next few years i want to thank you for listening i want to mention that there's always courses private lessons and readings with me over zoom i want to thank you for commenting and sharing this this is me and father may we all live long and prosper Bye bye